Oh, sorry, Boiler Room Festival. Did you guys go? I didn't go. Um, I kind of. Uh, what did I say? Was I snobby about it? Not really. I kind of thought it was a bit lame. I don't know. I think it's a bit lame. I don't know. I kind of had a weird view about it, but after seeing the videos, after seeing the the breadth of artists that performed at this at this fucking festival, um, after seeing how fun it looked in the crowd for once, because I, I mentioned it previously, right, a few times that um, I have a really hard time uh, going to boiler rooms, even the really good ones, because for the most part, London crowds are really shit at boiler room. I think we're a bit too cool for school. There's too many hipsters here. We kind of, I don't know, we, we just we just generally don't really do boiler rooms that well. After going to Berlin boiler room a few times, right, I've been talking about Berlin so much lately, but whatever, it's my podcast. Having gone there a few times, I've realized that, you know, the way we do bo- boiler room isn't as good, or maybe it wasn't as good as it was in the past, right? There's probably a bit too much awareness of the cameras or something like it, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, all that being said, the boiler room festival absolutely smashed that apart right it kind of went back to the roots of what boiler room was about it looked super fun it was a really great idea very very well executed and again i think such a great um tool and maybe a good avenue for what boiler room want to do in the future it kind of looks like they've realized that there's only so much there's only so many brand partnerships they can do there's only so much times they can kind of quote unquote whore out their name or attach their name to a brand sponsorship and get them to kind of slap their logos all over the place. Or something like. There's so many they can do. If they're able to do more of these festivals in different locations around the world and charge a ticket entry fee, it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing, right? And you get the added advantage of being on camera if you're a punter. You get to buy some merch there. Maybe if there's some merch there, blah blah. They get a drink sponsorship and you get make money in the bar. There's so many cool things that they can do going forward. And I think it's such a great idea. Something I've, I'm surprised they haven't done sooner. So if you're not aware of it. Boiler Room Festival took, part, took place in London. I'm, I'm pretty, they might end up doing it in other locations from the, what was the date? From the 9th to the 10th of, of August, of October, sorry, four day festival. Each day was split into different genres of, of yeah, things, right? Uh, genres. So day one was jazz, as seen on the screen here. Day two was rap. Day three was bass. And day four was club. So each, so each kind of they kind of signify a different sort of genre of music they're kind of aiming towards. I'm not sure if it was a different venue or the same venue, but for the most part, for the stream, I think I saw two or three venues in there. But again, each day was stacked full of people. Here's a here's the kind of um, uh, website on it. Uh, sounds about Absolute Vodka. Four days, one city, no headliners. Centered around Peckham, the boiler room. Oh, it's around Peckham. Awesome. Um, the boiler room festival will push the boundaries of the traditional festival, intimate raw in, in, in the in the round, showcasing a different underground scene each day. The multi-event program will feature emerging artists from contemporary jazz, rap, bass, and club culture. This isn't about the headliners. It's about the next generation. It's not about anyone in any one artist. It's about the communities they thrive on, which is amazing, right? So it's idea about you know propping up this new generation giving them exposure on, on obviously boiler room which is a huge platform for people to kind of get exposure on and just in general and a bit uh, a very good um way for come consumers and maybe even brands and sponsors to see what kind of pool and audience boiler room can kind of attract because these kind of all fall into different sort of categories different brands might be, want to be associated with this sort of music it was a really good calling kind of really good advertisement of what the power of boiler room is basically essentially and again a four-day festival each each day different day different artists jazz you got all the artists here which i'm probably not that familiar with um you got rap you got some good people on there as well you got amari washington um you got who's you got you got dwe on the rap which is interesting uh you got dj nip tizzle amy becker and stuff great people there on bass you got all the usual people in there bass and perks so again i'm who i'm familiar with lucy i'm familiar with jubilee uh nida I'm, I'm familiar with youngster i'm familiar with and then club culture you've got all the ones that i'd want to go see right uh, Pateka, bbz becky tong dj stingray doc sleep um sam um m c m l x x x x v which i'm going to play in a minute sherelle shy one like great 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 artists playing um throughout the days again um really really good um lineup i'm a real big fan of it i think the tickets were pretty cheap as well right for the most part um so what was a four-day pass four-day pass was 50 pounds man wow one idiot for not going i was so so much of a snob to go and not go i don't know boy room is it's probably because it's too young for me the kids going in now they i don't know i should have i should have went look at that 50 pounds amazing so the, the ones that sold out were the jazz and club okay first day of jazz and first day of club culture so that's interesting isn't it rap and bass didn't sell out interesting right jazz and thing i wonder why jazz sold out maybe because they had really big people in jazz that i'm not really familiar with that's amazing the jazz and thing but again to see all those people at, at the jazz festival right there's over there's only over 10 names art, artists on there to see everyone there if you got early bed tickets, fifteen pounds. Final release was twenty seven fifty. That's a bargain anyway, regardless. But for a four day pass, it was fifty quid. That is insanely good. That is insanely good. 
Um, so yeah, they they smashed it. A really good event for the most part from what I saw. And like I mentioned beforehand, I saw um, my favorite um, uh, um, probably performance was probably Sem. They played really well. And then um, the other one, uh, a duo DJ in there, um, Hector Oaks and some other dude, I forgot his name. Um, but essentially the one that really, really stood out for me was um, MCMLXXXV. Um, he absolutely smashed it, played a really amazing set, loads of techno, loads of electro, um, just loads of interesting cool stuff. He, he, play, he even played a Tiesto track that I, I completely forgot about um, from years gone by, which I'm going to actually, let me see if I can find it here. I think I Shazammed it. He played a fucking Tiesto track. I was like, oh my God, shit, I haven't heard this in years. Um, it made you realize again, you know, okay, there's a reason why Tiesto is like, you know, one of the most well paid, if not the well paid artists in the world, right? He he makes some fucking good music, or he has made good music in the past. Um, he still does anyway. Yeah, a, a tune called Traffic by Tiesto. He played that as well in a set. I was just insane. I'm going to get get it up on here now for you guys to see and listen to a little bit. Hopefully, you guys can check this out here. This is this is um, MCML xxxv i'll put the, the 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 link in the show notes for you guys to check it out Stepping but it's a really interesting set let me just forward a little bit from the announcer talking but it's really good he, he actually presented really really well to be honest um that's a kind of dream anyway to have him introduce you right it's sort of like joe rogan he's yeah he's like he's like a dj version of joe rogan isn't he <laughs> so yeah amazing he had he had his great he had his friends in the background going crazy the guy in the white in a white vest to his left was smashing it maybe he might be boyfriend i'm not too sure there was a real weird beef between the girl here as well at the back that was kind of going a bit too crazy. Um, she was getting too close to the decks as he was mixing. He tried to get her away and she wouldn't get away and eventually his friends just had to kind of like come and kind of like push her out of it but she was super, super, super fucked up. Hope you, I hope you can see the girl at the back. She's kind of wearing a black vest but yeah, it was a really, really good set. I really recommend check it out. One of my favourite sets of the, of the weekend and again, I'm so gutted I didn't go. Like, what an idiot. What an idiot for not going. But he listens to a bit of it now. Is it me or or or, or, or the EQs on those? What is that? That's not best tech. What's it called? Those mixes are a lot better than the Pioneers, isn't it? It's just a lot of like silencing. It just really mutes the the highs and the mids and the lows. I think it's one of those mixes that also has two highs and two mid, mid lows as well, which is quite cool. But yeah, that's the girl down the left hand side, right there. If you can see her, right? So to, no, sorry, to his left or to the screen's left. That girl there was the one that was getting in trouble a little bit. She had a bit of beef. Like she was barging into people, like just being a bit of a nuisance. But yeah, the dancing was amazing. Loads of real cool club kids came out. Again, probably one of the best vibes I've seen so far from a boiler room. Smash it. Let's talk a little bit so you can see. See, that's the girl there. She's going a bit too crazy. <laughs> Look how close she is. Elbows everywhere. <laughs> They have to get her out of it. Eventually she moves out of the way and they kind of push her out. But yeah, I recommend you check it out. Really, really cool set by MCM. Uh, XXV absolutely smashed it. Oh, she's still there actually. The front, she was she stayed around for a while, isn't it? Oh, no, that's another girl. So it's another girl that came in there, but yeah, really cool set. Um, again, one I recommend you check it out. I'll put in the show notes for you guys to see for yourself, but yeah, MCMLXXV sm absolutely smashed it. And again, check him out where you can see him. And again, like I said, Boiler Room Festival looked amazing. I was um gutted to not go myself. I think again, I had my snobby hat on, they probably thought I was over it or too big for it or whatever it may be cool but have you seen the images and seen the videos and people enjoying themselves and in general just the idea behind like i said like 50 quid for all those artists to see all those people playing in one arena right for for four days it's just an insane value for money that's just insane how good that is 50 quid for a that's just wow what a, good, what a great idea and again like i said i think it's a good idea for them going forward good revenue stream they can't keep on doing sponsors all the year all year round they have to mix up a little bit and this is probably a good way to go do it right have some money coming in you've got money from the door um uh, money from the tickets sold money from the bar money from the merchants they're selling that on site too which would be an easy thing to do and just in general just a great approach and i was wondering if in the future we're going to get an uh, we're going to get an, an occasion where boiler room will make a portal where they'll post pictures up so you can get pictures off their site watermarked and fucked up and small or they can give you high-res image of everyone that was at this event and if you see yourself you can buy the image for like a couple of quid I, I'd, I'd do that i think you'd get quite a lot of buyers 99p for each image you just you just get be able to buy the images of you and your friends having a good time that'd be pretty cool i'm not sure if that's possible um but that'd be quite amazing if they were able to do that would it be amazing i don't know to be amazing interesting a revenue stream because again i'm like I'm, I, I i imagine this is a a ploy to get more money coming in right because there's only so many brands punches again like i keep saying that you can do you have to do something else 
out of it. But maybe pictures are not a good thing. The merch is doing really well. I see a lot of people wearing the merch out and about. They don't look because before when I used to see people wearing merch, they look like the kind of people that worked at Boiler Room, right? The kind of you know black trousers, white socks, white Reebok workouts crowd. Um, the people that always carried around I don't know like a Fonica tote bag or you know. <laughs> those kind of things are hard wax tote bags that those kind of people but now i'm seeing regular folk wearing um, the t-shirts which is good it shows that you know the brand because it's quite it's quite hard to wear for instance like i had depop t-shirt depop merch because i used to work there right so when people see me wearing depop merch they immediately assumed i used to work there because it's quite odd to see somebody wearing depop merch that doesn't have any affiliation with depop but once you cross over and you become a big enough brand or the appeal or you have a resonance with your customers or with people that are using the app where they want to support the brand as well. And it's not just an auxiliary item. Like, you're never going to see someone wearing an eBay hoodie, right? People just sell on there and keep it moving. But people actually love Depop. People love Boiler Room. So it makes sense that in the future, you'd probably see people wearing the merch more often because, you know, they just want to be associated with it. They want the association. They want you to see Boiler Room, see them, and all make you think they're cool because if they like Boiler Room, that means they're into this kind of music, means they're into this sort of subculture. It means they have this sort of political leanings. They have this sort of worldview. Immediately, you kind of, you kind of su- are able to surmise them as a person um, pretty quickly over just the period, just for them wearing a, a neon green long sleeve um, Boiler Room t-shirt or some shit. But yeah, by and large, Great idea for them going forward. I'm interested to see how this is going to develop. Interested to see if they're going to do it. If they do it in another city, I'll be gutted because that means I can't go to the next one next year. And again, it's quite fun to go to festivals the first year round, especially when they when they just set up because they're a bit fucked up. It's long to queue. The bars are not set up properly. And then you, you go in the preceding years and it starts to get better and better. I quite, I quite like the idea of growing with festivals. I don't know with a few other places, especially in club nights and stuff like that. You start going places the first couple of times, it's a bit shit, and then it suddenly gets better and better over time, I guess. So I hope they do it again in London, but I'm almost surprised they kind of move it around the country or move it around the world, which should be quite cool to see um going forward and all that malarkey but yeah first one in london makes sense because that's where it started and all that malarkey but yeah um looks good man looks good uh big up boy room for that so yeah big up everyone i went if you did go let me know how you how you like did you like it did you enjoy it did you have a good time um is there anything that you would change about it going forward um let me know in the comments let me know in the comments